Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on Flowshop. My name is Joseph. This is a continuation of the frequency separation video. So if you're from there and you're watching this, that's fine. But if you haven't and you just stumbled upon this video, I do recommend you watching that video. So I'm going to put a link in the description and in the card so you can watch that because this video is a follow up of that video. And that's a frequency separation tutorial. This is a Dodge and Burn, which is just a follow up of the frequency separation. And looking at how I use frequency separation and Dodge and Burn, if you don't watch the frequency separation, video you may not understand some of the things that I'm doing inside of Dodge and Burn or how both techniques are helping this particular image look the way I want it to. Today's video I'm just going to use Dodge and Burn to continue shaping and correcting the image till I think it's about okay if I can say that. <laughs> so without wasting much time I'm going to jump right into it. So I'm going to go into my actions and I'm going to run my Dodge and Burn action. So if you want to download Dodge and Burn actions, there are lots of them online as well. You can find them, but it's a simple way of creating it. Just go to Curves, create two copies of it. So now that you've run the action and it's created these layers for me, like the Dodge, the Burn, and then the Guide or the Help layer, I'm going to start with the retouching process so i'm going to start with a dodge hit b for my brush tool shift away from the mixer brush and go to my normal brush and i'm going to set the opacity to about 80 percent and i'm going to set the flow to about three percent now what that's going to do is just make sure that my strokes are not going to be very visible immediately all the strokes i'm going to be applying is going to be like a build up and so i can paint over a particular area over and over till it moves to the point that i want so for example if my opacity is at 100 percent and my flow is also at 100 and i go to my dodge layer like i want to dodge this area for example the moment i paint once you can see this very visible white stroke and that's a little bit too much because it's not blending in it's not fixing any problems it's rather creating its own problems if i want to fix the one over here for example i know i'm gonna dodge it but the moment i paint over it yes it's done a good job but you can see it didn't do a very perfect job so you painting bit by bit is a rather safe if i should say process of using dodge and burn or more careful because then you have more control over what you're doing so i'm gonna undo or maybe just fill the layer with black one more time and we're gonna start so i'm gonna again change the opacity to 80 or find whatever figure works for you and flow three percent so what i'm gonna do is now that i have my dodge layer selected and I am on the layer mask. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush to the area I want to correct. And I'm going to start painting gradually. So the first part of the dodge and burn is corrective. So the parts that the frequency separation couldn't fix, I'm going to try and do that with dodge and burn. So the first thing I'm going to do, or that's bugging me, is this one. So I'm going to start painting just to lighten it up and make it a little bit smoother. Even if it doesn't go all the way, I don't really mind. But once it's not as visible as it was, I think that's a very good job done. So here's a little before and after. You can see right now it's a little bit softer, more controlled, and it's looking a little bit more pleasing. All right, so I'm just gonna go over and then just keep painting tra transition areas that are not really, really blending in as well as they should. And I'm just gonna be painting and correcting that so again i have my left hand on the left and right bracket keys and i'm making it bigger or smaller depending on the area that i'm painting and i'm just trying to fix that so right now that i'm doing the dodging it means that i'm just concentrating on areas that are darker than they are supposed to be and i'm just dodging them to lift it up to a point where it blends in with the rest of the surrounding areas perfectly all right so just like that I'm not zooming in or zooming out because this image is going to go on social media and even this view on my PC is already like detailed enough. So I'm just keeping it right here. Unless I want to like take care of a very intricate part, then maybe I'll zoom in. But for the most part, I'm going to keep the zoom just around this level, just so I don't waste too much time paying attention to areas that I don't even need to pay attention to. In case you can't see what I'm doing, here's a before and after. And you can see that I'm gradually fixing certain problem areas that you didn't even notice in the beginning. If you can't see such problems, just keep practicing. Um, you begin to see it the more you dodge and burn. 
and remember you're just adding shape right you want the image to pop so it's you just have to be careful and know that the dodge and bend you're doing is to even out transitions yes but it's also supposed to enhance the overall form or shape of the subject just like that all right now the problem doesn't exist in the dodge alone so i'm going to move to my burn layer and i'm going to start darkening areas that need a little bit of darkening and sometimes when you do that you begin to see areas that you missed when you were dodging so by all means don't start with dodge and finish everything concerning dodge you can always alternate between dodge and burn just go back and forth till you know you feel you've covered enough of the blemish areas one other thing too is unlike frequency separation you can create so many dodge and burn layers just to tackle different parts of the image that's what i like about dodge and burn the fact that you don't really have to do everything on one layer if it was frequency separation and i wanted to run another frequency separation action i'd have to convert that group the frequency separation group into a smart object before i can run another action and you know you now have to select the blur radius and all that it's a little bit of a tedious process compared to just running a dodge and burn action that's to me it's it's easier with dodge and burn so frequency separation you can see fix a lot of the problem areas and dodge and burn is just like a last resource for me to further enhance the image so i wouldn't spend as much time as if i was doing everything inside dodge and burn but if that's what you want if you have all the time in the world <laughs> by all means you can do that so all I'm doing is just painting over areas that need some darkening and some of the areas that need some lightening. So if I unhide the black and white layer and just do it before and after, you'd think we weren't doing anything, but you can see right now that we are really evening out the skin tones a little bit more. So I'm going to leave the black and white layer off and I'm, I'm just going to keep painting because now that I turned the color off, I'm also seeing certain areas that are standing out a bit more. So again, you have those checks you can turn them on and off i mean you don't have it's not like there's really nothing strict about it you can just it's your pc like i'm saying <laughs> it's your software it's your hand your picture so by all means do it the way you want but just make sure you're not just doing anything you need to understand the rules before you can break them you yeah. know and there's really no systematic approach to dodging and burning like yo i'm starting with dodging and i'm finishing with dodging and then i'll move on to burning now nah, you can always alternate okay maybe i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more just to inspect the image i think right here looks quite okay for me and the next thing i'm going to do is now run another dodge and bend which is going to add like contouring or shape to the image so i'm gonna okay before i do that i think i want to dodge this area right here a little bit more it's looking a little bit dark for me just like that and maybe just paint some dodging here as well all right, so I'm gonna run another dodge and bend action. So go back to my actions, dodge and bend, run. For this one, I don't need the help layer, so I'm just gonna straight away unhide it. Go to my dodge, press B again for my brush tool. Make the flow maybe 10%, and I'm gonna add contouring. So wherever the highlights are, I'm just painting over there, just a little bit like that. There's highlights here, so I'm gonna paint some highlights here as well. I'm just trying even this in like while, once I'm here and her lips I'm gonna dodge this area right here as well dodge right here so wherever the light already exists I'm painting right there and I'm also being careful because I don't want to change her shape at all I'm trying to keep it as natural as possible okay 
So here's the before and after, before and after. All right, so we're gonna go to the band and do the same thing. So I'm just gonna go around like that. Wherever the shadow, I'm just gonna enhance it by darkening it some more. Perfect. Her lips, just gonna burn that. And it's adding more shape to the lips. So the corners, anywhere there's a shadow, I'm just going over to enhance that. So the nose, I'm doing the same thing. And I'm rushing a little bit because I also don't want to bore you guys. I don't want the video to be extremely long. So I'm just speeding up a little bit. But when you're doing it, you can always take your time and, you know, just take your time and do it well. Mm -hmm. This is just a tutorial, so I can get away with speeding. <laughs> All right. Yes, yeah, so I'm going over the eyeliner, just darkening it to enhance the look. So now that I've done that, I noticed I missed it in the dodging. So I'm just going to go into dodge and then probably just brighten the eyes right here a little bit. Just like that. All right, so one last thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just taking a, a look again at the image to see if I've missed out anything or probably overdone certain things. And um, what I want to do is just, you know, the before and after of just the dodge and bend, I'm just doing it to see if I've gone overboard and it looks like I have. So what I'll just do is bring the opacity of just the burn layer down to about 50%, do it before and after. So you can see it's there, but it's not as strong as it was before. So this is a, let me group these two dodge and burn layers into one, rename it D and B. And right now when I just do it before and after, it's gonna show me before and after of both um, the dodge and burn layers as one. And I think what we've done is pretty decent, but I still want to do a little bit of fixing. So I'm going to go inside the dodge and bend again, run my action one more time and open the one I just run, hide the black and white, go back to the dodge, actually go to bend because I want to bend the corner of the eye a little bit more, bring the flow down to 3% and I just want to darken this area right here like so. I was standing out a little bit too much for me and I'd rather dodge again so you can create as many dodge and bend layers as you want I don't tend to fix everything on the first set of layers I always have a lot of dodge and bend layers um, that I use to fix different things or different parts of an image again just so if I make a mistake I can rather delete that instead of deleting the entire dodge and bend layer and starting afresh so that's the reason why I like to do that. So I think at this point it looks good, but I want to darken the eyes even more. So I just pressed R for my rotate tool, just so I can paint over these areas a little bit more easily. So I'm just painting just to darken the eyeliner some more. Because when I do that, it's really going to make the eyes pop um, just a little bit more. So... I'm just darkening it just like that and since I'm here I'm just gonna go to dodge and then sh I can see that there was a little bit of highlights right under here so I'm just gonna highlight that a little bit move on to the other side since I'm already on the dodge then just dodge this area go back to burn and paint over the darker areas just like that So I'm just painting over. All right, so I'm gonna hit R again, press escape and it's gonna reset it and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. So this is before you can see the eyes really, really pop out now and with that little bit of dodging under the eye. It's just making it pop a little bit more. So at this point, I think I'm done with the dodge and bend, but there are a few things I want to do to set the image um, right. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit like this, create a new blank layer, hit J for my healing brush, 
and I'm just going to heal certain areas that are standing out now that I've done all these things. So even though I did healing before doing frequency separation and dodging and burn, after I did that, it's brought out certain blemishes that I think I can just heal and get rid of those um, easily. So like I said, even though I like to do my healing before I do frequency separation and dodging and burn, you can always do it at any stage of your retouching process. What matters the most is your end result, not the process, right? Okay, so I'm just healing little by little the areas that are standing out to me, just like that. Perfect. And I wasn't noticing this before, but it's because of all the things I've done, it's making this stand out. And it's just taking a few minutes to heal these. And it's going to help with the overall look of the image. Just like that. Okay. So just going around the image again, looking to see if I'll find anything that needs a little bit of healing. And it looks like I am done with this. I don't really need to do anything else. Let me undo that. Let me just heal this area like so. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out now and do it before and after of the healing. And you can see it's just a little bit of fixing. So normally when I do healing at this point, I always bring the opacity down to about 60%. And that's just about right. So before, after, before, after. And I kind of like where we've been able to move the image to. So what I'm going to do, just to finish off the image, even though I said it's a dodge and burn tutorial, I'm going to run my melanin action. Again, if you don't know how to get this melanin action, um, I'm going to put a link in the description or in the card. You can check that out. I'm just going to bring the opacity all the way down to maybe 28% before and after. It's just cooling it down a little bit. And... Um, I think we're done. I, I really don't want to do anything else to the image right now. I think we're done. All I'll just do is put my noise filter on top of that. So zoom in a little bit um, before the noise and after. It's just adding a little bit of texture to it. So all in all, we're done with everything. Let me group everything in a layer, call it retouch. And here's a before and here's an after. So yes, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this whole process. Um, do you like the way I combined frequency separation and lodge and bend to retouch my images? Do you use a similar process? Is your process different? If you're new and you haven't subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like to support the channel. Let's try and get this video to 100 likes and the previous video to 100 likes in case it's not there by the time you're seeing this video. And uh, yeah, also I want to take the time again to tell you that I announced that when I get to 4,000 subscribers, I'm gonna be doing a live stream. Now I'm trying to fix a date where we can do the live stream. So as soon as I do that, I'm going to put it in my community tab and let you guys know when we're going to be doing a live stream so you guys can save the days, plan ahead and make yourselves available for that. So yeah, let me leave you guys right here and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.